Macy CEO Jeff Gannett, thank you for joining us here today on your earnings day to talk about the quarter and beyond. I guess we'll start sort of right there where Carl made the introduction for us. You had a nice quarter. Your earnings beat substantially, double analyst consensus. Why not raise your full year earnings forecast? So, hi, Courtney. Great to be with you and see you again. Um, we take a cautious view right now of the consumer. We've been talking about this consumer for the last number of quarters, and uh, we're taking that all the way through the back half of the year. There were some good things that happened within the quarter. Uh, we obviously beat on what we expected in terms of sales and gross margin, as well as SG&A or expense. Uh, but we did have some shortfalls when we looked at credit income. And we also kind of took note of where the consumer is. What are the tailwinds, like when you think about savings rates? But what are coming in is as, as potential new headwinds, like what's going on with student loans and uh, the expiration of the loan forgiveness that is happening in October? You know, just the persistent amount of inflation and how that affects the psyche of the consumer and how they spend. When we look at our consumer, they are spending, and when you think about services and experiences, more of a point of their wallet share uh, than, than goods. Uh, and then within goods, you know, where are they spending? And so we're looking at all of that very, very carefully. What I would say is the good news is that our inventory is in great shape. We've built in liquidity across all of our categories. We have a lot of confidence in what we've constructed for the back half of the year, particularly the fourth quarter. Uh, we've got categories that are working like beauty that have a higher penetration in the fourth quarter than the other three quarters of the year. We've got new additions like Nike. We've got Under Armour on deck for spring season. We've got our Toys R Us Disney collaboration of the 100th anniversary of Disney. It's coming for the fourth quarter. But it's prudent for us to take a view of the consumer and really have the liquidity that we need to be able to chase those demands. And so obviously Macy's sells many different categories. You mentioned beauty as one, but discretionary categories in general have been really in focus this quarter and the previous quarter. To your point, as many consumers are shifting more of their income towards experiences. So in general, how, how would you view the consumer when, they, when it comes to spending in discretionary categories that you really over-index in, like apparel, for instance, footwear? Yeah, so I think that's where when you think about our you know, battery of our three banners, Bloomingdale's, Blue Mercury, and Macy's, and we're multi-channel, we're multi-category, you know, we've got great strength digitally, we've got great strength you know, on mall, we're building new competencies with our five growth factors, particularly with off mall as an example, we're building new private brands, we're reaching these customers with more modernized marketing through our personalization technique. We're drafting off of strength and luxury for this aspirational customer. So we have lots of options with customers. We've also got things like marketplace so that we don't have, you know, the ownership of the inventory, but we're able to expand categories and expand brands. So we're working in the right directions because we are so committed to getting back to profitable growth. And so when you think about what our plans are for 24 and beyond, we believe the growth factors is going to be a foundation of that. But we have still lots of work we're doing on the fundamentals of, of the business as an omnichannel retailer.